What's up guys, it's Mr. Bringle and we are going to talk about acceleration stacks of graphs. That's what we call this uh, this worksheet here and so you may want to write that at the top just for uh, future reference. Um, I've already drawn uh, four position versus time graphs on here so um, you'll want to get those on your paper. Then we're going to look at how do we take that position versus time graph and turn it into a velocity versus time graph and then uh, in addition to that draw an acceleration versus time graph uh, for the object. So let's start with this first one here. Um, you'll notice that two of them are in red and two of them are in green. Um, I'll explain that here in a minute. But starting off with our first starting off with our first graph here, um, remember that the slope of a position versus time graph represents the velocity. So we need to show how the velocity changes on this graph. Now, the way that we're going to do that, and I mentioned it in our uh, acceleration notes, but we just need to look at basically two points on this curve. If we start down here, we notice that there's hardly any slope, right? There's zero slope there. So the object must start somewhere uh, around zero here on the velocity versus time graph. Okay. And then as you move forward along the time here, the object's slope increases until it's a very high slope, a uh, very positive slope at the end. So what we want to do is we also want to show that the slope increased to some positive number by the end of its time. And so all we would do here is we would connect these two dots, and there's the velocity versus time graph that represents or that uh, depicts the acceleration from the position versus time graph. So again, the object starts at zero meters per second because it has no slope here. So zero meters per second on our velocity versus time graph. And then the slope starts to increase. So the velocity is increasing until it is some at some very positive value, which we have put here. Okay. Now, when we're doing our acceleration versus time graph, it's very, very simple. If your velocity versus time graph has a positive slope, which this one does, then we are just going to draw a flat positive line on our acceleration versus time graph. Okay, um, So all of these examples that we'll be doing will be showing constant acceleration. So now if we move over to our next graph here, we can, we'll go back and let's, let's work on our slope again. So up here at the beginning, the object has a very negative slope, right? It's, it's now negative. So what we would want to do is we would want to start at a very negative value on our velocity versus time graph, okay? And then as we follow along with the time, the slope starts to decrease right and then it gets down here where the slope is essentially zero so we would then want to take our velocity versus time graph and put a point on the zero line and then again we're just going to connect these dots here and so to go back over that the object starts with a very negative slope we put our negative point right here on the velocity versus time graph as we move forward, as the object moves forward, the slope starts to decrease and it gets closer and closer to zero until it's basically flat. So we show that the object's velocity is decreasing here and gets closer to zero. There's always a lot of confusion on this because we're showing a positive slope and people tend to think that that means the object is speeding up just because it has a positive slope. But recognize that we're going from some very negative number, let's say negative 20 meters per second. Remember that that negative only tells you the direction that the object is moving in. It has nothing to do, it's not below zero. So if it starts at 20 meters per second and moves towards zero, that object is slowing down. The negative is just telling you the direction that it's moving in. Okay, so just like before, we said that all we have to do to draw our acceleration versus time graph is look at the slope on this line, on the velocity versus time graph. So this slope is positive, it's a positive slope. So we're again going to draw a flat positive line, mine's a little angled there, but it should be flat, on our acceleration versus time graph. Now again, that might be a little confusing. 
because in the first graph the object was speeding up and it had a positive acceleration. In the second graph, the object's slowing down and it still has a positive direction or uh, acceleration. So how does that work? Well, it's all about the direction that the object is traveling in. In this first graph, the object is going in the positive direction and since it's speeding up, that means the acceleration has to be in the same direction of movement. So since it's moving in the positive direction, we have a positive acceleration. In the second graph, the object moves in the negative direction and it's slowing down. Whenever an object is slowing down, its acceleration must be in the opposite direction of movement. So if it's moving in the negative direction, that means that to slow down, we would have to have a positive acceleration. Okay, So that's something we'll get practice with. If you don't fully understand that, that's okay. Um, we'll continue to work with that. Let's go ahead and move down here to our green graphs. Let's take a look at these. So in this first graph, again, we're going to draw our slope lines on here. We've got a very positive slope to start with. So we do want to show that the object starts at a positive velocity. And then as we progress here, the object's slope starts to decrease. And it gets closer to zero up here at the top. So what we want to do is then show that the object's velocity is down here on the zero line for the velocity versus time graph, and then we just connect the dots. So once again, just to sort of show you here, we start with a very positive slope, positive velocity. The slope starts to decrease as we move along, so we're showing that the velocity is decreasing, and then it gets closer to zero, and we put the final dot on the zero line here. So this time we actually have a negative slope for our velocity versus time graph. So that means for our acceleration versus time graph we should have a flat line um, somewhere on the negative side there Okay, for a negative acceleration. So once again to go back and, and touch on the direction thing this object is moving in the positive direction and it's slowing down, right? It's going from a positive velocity to no velocity. So because it's slowing down, the acceleration must be in the opposite direction of movement. Since this object is moving in the positive direction, we would have a negative acceleration. All right, moving on to our last graph here. Let's draw our slope lines on here. Initially, the object starts with a pretty flat slope. Um, so it's around zero, and then as we progress here, the slope gets more and more negative. Okay, so um, I kind of skipped ahead here, but the object starts at zero velocity, okay, and then it moves to a negative velocity somewhere down here. Connect those lines. Okay, so flat slope, meaning no velocity. So we put our first dot here. As we go through the line, the object's slope gets more and more negative. So we show that the velocity becomes more and more negative until it gets to this point here. Now we have again a negative, sorry about that, a negative slope on our velocity versus time graph, which means that we're once again going to have a negative acceleration. And it's similar to what we talked about before. The object is moving in the negative direction and it is speeding up. Remember, the negative on the a negative velocity just tells you the direction. If it's going from zero slope to a to some slope, it has to be speeding up. So this object is speeding up in the negative direction. It's moving towards zero. And if an object is speeding up, that means its acceleration must be in the same direction. So since the object is moving in the negative direction, we have a negative acceleration here. Okay, So there's your tutorial on acceleration stacks of graphs. You will need to know how to take a position versus time graph and generate a velocity versus time graph and an acceleration versus time graph. We'll get tons of practice with this.